what is up everyone this is georgia the techie today i'm doing a little bit of a different video i am not doing a review or a tutorial i am basically just doing a first impressions on the asus chromebook flip cx5 versus my pixelbook go which is what i've been using for the past I don't know, a couple of years. This uh, Chromebook, the CX-5, I purchased about two weeks ago. So I've been using it nonstop, testing it, pushing it to the limit, doing the things that I normally do, such as video editing, using Notion, using Google Docs, using all the stuff that you will normally do on a Chromebook, plus the video editing part, which is not normally done on a Chromebook. And I just wanted to do a quick video to kind of just give you guys an overall on the things that I found. Um, this Chromebook, um, as you can see, it's a lot bigger than the Pixelbook Go. And by the way, I have a skin over the Pixelbook Go. It is not that pink. I just have a skin over it, which now I gotta try to figure out how to remove, if it's even possible to remove so I can possibly sell this. So as far as the Asus goes, as you can see, this is a much larger screen. So it was actually, <laughs> quite a shock for me to get used to working on a bigger screen. I mean, I do use an external monitor, so obviously, you know, I, I do use a bigger screen, but every once in a while I'll undock it and I'll sit on the couch and work on things. And <laughs> working on this Chromebook has been amazing. This is, I love this Chromebook. This Chromebook is so much faster than the Pixelbook Go. Now, as I mentioned, this is the entry model base model M3 Pixelbook Go. This is the base model CX-5. So this one does not have an i5 or an i7. The Iris graphics that we've been seeing all over the place that is being advertised, this is just a base model. So it has an 11th gen Core i3 processor, Intel Tiger Lake, but also it has eight gigs of RAM. It has a 128 gig SSD, and it has a full HD 15.6 inch screen. The performance gains are superior compared to other processors right now, but comparing it to the Pixelbook Go, as I mentioned before, when I'm doing video editing, it's, it makes a huge difference. In fact, I've been able to start using, experimenting with some Linux video editors, such as uh, Shutcut. That's the one that I start experimenting with because I wanted a little bit more of a pro a video editor and it's been running buttery smooth you know as long as you turn on proxy editing and you do uh, preview scaling at the lowest uh, resolution and also editing at 1080p i haven't tried 4k at at those settings and with 1080p this thing has not even stuttered i was not able to do this and i did try it on the pixelbook go and i was not able to bear the lag it was just like you would press play and it would just it was, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, so as far as performance, highly recommended. This Chromebook is not that expensive. I believe it was $599 at Best Buy compared to you know, a lot of the premium Chromebooks that are coming out right now, which are over a thousand dollars. This is a bargain. I mean, if this is good enough for me, this is good enough for most people. There have been some complaints that the screen does not get very bright because it's only 250 nits. However, for me personally, it has not been an issue because I never use this outside, but I do see that nowadays you really need 300 nits or more, but it has not been an issue. I mean, I guess they had to cut some corners somewhere to get the price where it is. So I guess that's where they cut corners. Look and feel. Okay, so, I mean, you can see it. This this thing is it's gorgeous. Um, excuse my little SSD drive I have hanging. This is where I save my, uh, my video files but look at this this is just you know gorgeous it's black it's got a backlit keyboard um, on the outside is white i think they call it immersive white and then the interior they call it obsidian satin i think that's what they call it they have just fancy names for it um however i oh and then the bottom it has a fan so if it gets hot you know it'll it'll turn on and cool down the Chromebook ports. It's got an HDMI port, which nowadays that's pretty rare to see on a Chromebook. It's got um, uh, USB-C, uh, micro SD card slot. And on this side, it has another USB-C, which is where I have my, my little external hard drive plugged in. And it's got a regular USB 
at headphone jack, the volume rockers right here, and it's got uh, the power button. So that's pretty much as far as that I.O. Um, but yeah, so if I have to give, if I had to give a rating to this Chromebook, I would give it a B plus. I mean, it's to me, this is the budget premium Chromebook. It's not premium as, you know, the i5 and i7 models are going to be, or the six, the CX-9, which is what everybody is waiting on, you know, for heavy, heavy uh, lifting. But um, for someone who's looking at a budget Chromebook, this is great. So yeah, that's pretty much what I think of the Asus Chromebook Flip CX-5. All right, guys, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I have a playlist, which I'm going to link um, up here um, with all the tutorials that I've done so far. But if you have any suggestions for future videos, go ahead and comment down below. And um, I guess that's it. See you in the next one.